standards 8F2 and 8F4 focus on comparing functions and modeling functions. This first standard, 8F2, is about comparing functions. And when we compare functions, we're usually looking at slope and y-intercepts, but sometimes also x-intercepts. So looking at problem number one, which linear function has the greatest initial value? We know initial value is just another phrase that means y-intercept. We could represent that by the letter B, or we could also um, figure out what it is by seeing where x is 0. So we're going to start there with finding our y-intercept. Um, looking at function A, we want to know where x is 0. Sometimes we can see it in a table, and in this case we don't have where x is 0. Sometimes we can find a pattern in a table, and I could extend the table. I could go left of it and see a pattern because I'm noticing that my x's are counting up one every time, so I'm going to go backwards. I notice that my y's count up two every time, so I'm going to go backwards two. And if I were to check this, I would see that every time that x adds 1, y adds 2. x adds 1, y adds 2. x adds 1, y adds 2. So I'm seeing that extended all the way through. So my ordered pair 0, 11 does work here. And that tells me that b, the y-intercept, is 11. I could check that for function b. For function b, we're just going to look at this equation. It's already in the form of y equal mx plus b. So b is negative 5. And at function c, I want to see where x is 0. So I look over here. And x is 0, where y is 2. It's the ordered pair 0, 2. So b is 2 in the graph. So which one has the greatest initial value, the largest number for b? The greatest initial value is function a. Okay, now we want to figure out which one has the greatest rate of change? When we see rate of change, that's another phrase for slope, which we could call m. And that is where we find rise over run. So if I'm looking at this function a, slope, rise over run, is equal to the change of y divided by the change of x. And I see that every time y adds 2, x adds 1. We've already seen that in the table. And so the slope, m, is 2. If we look in this um, function b, the value of m is just that number in front of x, which is 4. So m is 4. And then from this graph, function c, remember that m is rise over run, or the change of y over the change of x. So if I choose this first point, 0, 2, and I choose another point that the line clearly goes through, which would be this point, 5, 3, I can use rise over run to see that it goes up 1, and then it runs to the right 5 places. When it goes right, it's going more positive, so we add 5. So that slope is one-fifth. And it's a positive slope, noticing that the line is going up to the right, which indicates positive. So the greatest rate of change was 4, and that one was with function b. Number 2, which function has the greater x-intercept? We don't use x-intercepts much, but we do use them sometimes. And that is where y is equal to 0. So looking at this function a, I don't have where y is 0, but I do notice that y is going down 2 every time. So if I extended this table on out, 
I could go down 2 to get 2 and go down 2 again to get 0. Notice that the x's are going up 2 every time. So if I extend this table, x when I add 2 I get 8 and then adding 2 again we get 10. So in this case the x intercept is 10. For function b, we're going to see what, what the x-intercept is when y is 0. So I'm just going to plug into this equation. y equal negative 2x squared plus 1. We'll plug in 0 for y. And we want to solve for x. So let's start by noticing that we have this x term. Oops. And we want to get um, rid of this plus 1, so we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. We get negative 1 is equal to negative 2x squared. Now we still have a, um, a coefficient in front of that variable. So let's get rid of this negative 2 by dividing both sides by negative 2. So we have positive 1 half is equal to x squared. Now we want to get rid of this exponent 2. So we're going to square root both sides. And then we can just go to a calculator and find what the square root of 1 half is. And I get a decimal about 0 0.71. It keeps on going, but it's approximately 0.71. So that's the x-intercept for function b. And which one is greater? Function a. 10 is a greater number than 0.7, so function a. Standard AF4 is largely about modeling um, functions, and we're usually going to see those linear functions written in the form of y equal mx plus b. So we're going to start with this problem number three. It says write a function in the form of y equal mx plus b for the line that passes through the points 2, 5, and 6, 21. So we're going to write an equation. We've got two ordered pairs, and we could start by finding their slope. I could do this one of a couple different ways. Um, I could use the slope formula. I could use a table of values. I think I'm going to go ahead and just write the slope formula. So m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And we need to note what these are. So I'm going to take this first ordered pair, x and y, and I'm calling it the first ordered pair, so it's sub 1, sub 1. That's just subscript naming the ordered pair, the first one. Then I'm going to take the second ordered pair, x and y, and I'm just going to name them x sub 1, y, um, sorry, x sub 2, y sub 2. That's just naming them the second ordered pair. And we just plug into that. So, we have y sub 2 is 21 minus y sub 1 is 5. y sub 2, I mean sorry, x sub 2 is 6 minus x sub 1 is 2. We can reduce that, or um, sorry, we can simplify that. 21 minus 5 is 16 over 6 minus 2 is 4. And 16 divided by 4 simplifies to 4. So we have found that the slope 4 uh, is what m is. Now we need to find b. To get b, we're going to use y equal mx plus b and plug in some things that we know. I'm going to use 2 and 5 for x and y. I could pick either ordered pair. I'm just going to pick the first ordered pair and start plugging in. y is 5 
equal m is 4 times x, which is 2, and we don't know b. We're going to solve for b. So we'll simplify. 4 times 2 is 8. We'll subtract 8 from both sides in order to get b by itself. And we get that negative 3 is b. Now I want to write the equation, write a function. That means what is the equation in the form of y equal mx plus b. So we're just going to write it. y equal 4x minus 3. And we're done with problem 3. Number 5. For each babysitting job, Adam charges a fee for his buff bus fare plus an hourly rate. The graph shows how he calculates his fee for a babysitting job. Write a linear function in the form of y equal mx plus b to represent the situation. So let's just go ahead and find out what m and b are. b is where x is 0. So that's the y-intercept. So b is 4. We know that's called the y-intercept. And then to get m, we're going to use rise over run. And so I can pick any two points on this line. I'm going to pick the y-intercept, and I'm going to go ahead and choose this point, 2, 14, um, because that's a point that the line clearly goes through. And it rises. We go from 4 up to 14, so it went up 10 units. And then the run, it goes to the right from 0 to 2, so it went right 2 units. Be careful on your graphs. Sometimes they consistently count one unit at a time, but this one, the Y's are counting, um, each block represents $2, and for the X coordinates, um, each block represents half an hour, so be careful here. But 10 divided by 2 is 5, so the slope M is 5. So when we write our equation in Y equal MX plus B, we've got Y equal 5, x plus 4. Number 10, what's the slope of this equation? So if the equation were already in y equal mx plus b, which is what it needs to be in in order to determine the slope, then this would be a quick one to just look at and answer, but it's not in that form. So let's think about what we need to do. We need to get this term negative 2y by itself. So we're going to get rid of 5x by subtracting that term 5x from both sides of the equation. On the left side, 5x minus 5x are opposites and they eliminate or cancel. And only negative 2y remains on the left side. On the right side, notice that this term 18 and this term negative 5x are not like terms. They cannot be combined. So we're just going to bring them down. I'm going to write my x term negative 5x first, and then I'm going to write my constant positive 18 last, just so it's matching up with the form of y equal mx plus b. Now, I've got the y term by itself, but I've got this coefficient, negative 2, that I need to get rid of. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. On the left side, those cancel out, and we just get y. And on the right side, we need to go through and do some calculating and say, okay, negative 5x divided by negative 2. I can pull my fraction out, which is negative 5 over negative 2 and reduce that, and I get positive 5 halves. It's so it's already reduced. I get positive 5 halves x. Then I have positive 18 divided by negative 2 is negative 9. So this equation is now in y equal mx plus b. I want to know the slope m, and m is 5 halves. So that matches answer choice B. Number 13, the data represents the cost of renting a jet ski, where X is the number of hours of the rental and Y is the cost of the rental. 
write a linear function in the form y equal mx plus b to represent the situation. And then how much does it cost to run a jet ski for 24 hours? So let's represent this using y equal mx plus b. So first of all, um, we could quickly figure out what the y-intercept is. I could extend my graph, notice, or my table, I'm sorry. Notice that it's counting up by going up two every time for the x's. So if I go back two, I've got zero, and that works. Notice that my y's are going up 30 every time. So I could extend my pattern and think, what plus 30 is 60? That would be 30. So I've got an ordered pair here where x is 0, so my y-intercept is 30. Now I can think about slope. Slope is the change of the y's divided by the change of the x's, or we could call that rise over run. Notice that the y's are always going up 30, and the x's are going up 2. So we get 15, so m is 15. So when we write our equation in y equal mx plus b, we've got y is equal to 15x plus 30. Now how much does it cost to rent a ski, a jet ski for 24 hours? Well, thinking back that x is the number of hours, and y is the cost of the rental. We want to know the cost y for x hours. And the hours are 24 hours. So we're just going to plug it into our equation. We have y equal 15x plus 30. We said x is the number of hours which is 24 hours, and y is the cost. So we're just going to simplify this. We're going to multiply 15 times 24 and then add 30. We get 390. So the cost is $390. Ready reduced.